Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today I'm going to talk about all the stocks that I have been buying recently and I'll go through the ones I've been buying, I've been buying a lot um, as you can see there's 10 stocks on this list that I've been buying a lot recently and the reason why is because last week, especially early on in the week, uh, we had a stock market that kind of uh, went to back uh, dipping again and when stocks are going down obviously for me those are the best opportunities to buy so with that happening I took advantage, I burnt through the cash pile a little bit nibbled at a few stocks was a bit heavier on a few other stocks and as well as that there was a lot of small market caps on sale as they pretty much have been for a lot of the year but as well as that there was some UK stocks on sale and obviously the Chinese stocks as well so the combination was just a lot out there to buy so uh, yeah I did burn through the cash pile quite heavy last week and uh, yeah as always I want to keep that transparency up so you know what I'm buying when I'm selling I will this week try doing my US stock market portfolio review as well for you guys but if you do want to know when I am buying and selling these companies in real time make sure you join the Patreon I always post when I'm buying and selling these companies in real time on there as well as selling as well as that there is some exclusive content on there I normally do two exclusive videos a week actually last week there was four exclusive videos last week on the Patreon which was pretty good going and as well as that there's a Discord with 600 members on there and for all that it's only £5 which I think is a pretty decent and I'm trying not to be biased about it and uh, as well as that if you don't want to start investing in some links to some brokers in the description like free trade you join through there you get a free share as well but I will try to spend a minute on each of these companies uh, I won't do a in-depth into all these stocks just because if I did the video would be very long uh, but every single stock on here I believe I have a full video on uh, but I will try and uh, spend a minute on each of these companies so the first two uh, are two UK companies and are very similar so I'll do them both at once Boohoo and ASOS, both of these companies are seemingly having very much the same sort of problem at the moment. They both come out with earnings. Earnings are obviously a little bit weaker because they didn't have a strong summer trade, not as many people going on holiday. Festival season being a little bit short as well. And because of that, um, and supply chain issues, their profit has been hurt a little bit. Because of that, that's affecting the share price at the moment and the downtrending. In long term, I still think both of them are fantastic companies. I think that when you look in long term, we'll probably get a proper summer and festival season uh, next year round. I know we keep saying that every year, but I generally think that will be the case next year. And as well as that, um, the Christmas season, this year going into the Christmas season or the holiday season, we will probably be pretty normal. Uh, last year, there wasn't really that many like Christmas parties going on, for example. And because of that and many festive things and festive events, there wasn't really... Uh, that much buying but this year even though there'll be some more there'll still be a little bit more limited there'll be a, definitely a lot more than last year so I think that as well as that they had very hard comparisons to beat uh, through the summer period as well last year because we did have a bit more um, things opened up really and people generally shopping online a lot more because a lot of the stores were closed uh, and I think the comparisons won't be as hard to beat uh, towards the back end of the year as well and the shipping problems that a lot of these have at the moment I feel like a lot of these will calm down as we get into next year as well so from long term point of views I feel like these companies will be very good buys I think with Boohoo you do get the better growth but ASOS as well even though it's very similar uh, and it doesn't grow as fast and once again I still think is a very good company and uh, a few people I, mean, I know a few guys will probably be buying one of these one of you might be considering Boohoo if you think it's the better one with the better growth some of you think I think the people that look at Boohoo and go I don't like Boohoo because it's a bit more uh, it has the um, con it has a bit more controversy around it so I think if you do um, worry about that then you are tending to buy ASOS at the moment but I pretty much know that a lot of you guys out here are probably a shareholder or buying one of these at the moment personally for me I am buying both of them uh, Boohoo a little bit more heavy Boohoo being the bigger position potentially could come my biggest UK position if I'm being honest and um, so yeah I did take the opportunity to buy both of these as both of them were moving down uh, last week I know a lot of you guys have asked about in the style as well uh, to be honest with you I you know I made a video saying I might buy it but now that I'm buying these two I don't want to get caught up into buying three of the same companies and average down three companies at the moment so at the moment I am yeah I'm focusing on these two and that's why I've not really bought that one even though I, I am very interested in it I just don't want to get down to uh, buying three of the com same companies and then averaging down on all three at the moment so yeah these are the two that I'm buying from the UK scene at the moment so next up I bought some Chinese stocks uh, I bought some Alibaba and I bought some Huya as you probably know uh, Chinese stocks no matter what's going on in the company have just been absolutely down and uh, the thing is with a lot of these companies in my opinion fundamentally they haven't changed I still think they'll grow massive profit massive revenue and I feel like these big um, things that sure you might create a bit of uncertainty and might should really affect the stock maybe 10% are currently you know knocking some of these share prices in half 
And I think for me, when I look at when I look at the discounts that these share prices are on, yeah, maybe it should give it a bit of a drop. But I feel like a lot of these companies, uh, this one, I think this one's lost half its value. Uh, I think this one's even lost more than half its value right now because I think I'm down something like 30% on that one. Um, you know, these uh, these both of these companies have lost half the value over something which I believe in the long term will not affect these companies fundamentally. And I look at these companies and think, yeah, sure, you know, there's a few changes out there that might affect it a little bit, but to lose half the value, like, come on, are we talking these companies, the, the profit they make are going to half in the next few years? The revenue is going to half in the next few years? Uh, in my opinion, I don't think so. So for me, I look at these sort of two companies, I think these are massive overreactions on the share price. And um, I know it's tricky sometimes, you know, it is tricky when you get kind of get to that point where you buy a company and something like a Huey, you know, uh, you know, you buy it 20 and then it goes down to 16, then it goes to 12 and then you go, that's it. And then it goes 10, eight, and then I think it even touched seven at one point. It is, it is really tricky going through them emotions. But for me, you know, I look at them and as a long-term investor, I look at this company two to five years and I feel like if they carry on growing earnings and revenue, uh, the, the companies haven't fundamentally changed. I think I'm getting a good bargain here. And if I just keep my average uh, getting lower and lower, um, I'll, I'll do quite well on them. So I did kind of buy into these two Chinese companies, which I have kind of been avoiding the last few weeks because I don't want to get into a, a buying a falling knife trend. But because there's been a bit of money coming back in, I thought, okay, I'll just buy a bit here and see where it goes. So yeah, I did take the advantage just to nibble away at these two uh, this week. Next up, probably my second or first favorite for the, the company on these list here that is massively undervalued. Uh, it, which is gang i did buy a little bit more gang i didn't think i would ever buy any more gang uh, but because it ditched, just seemed to dip from that uh, 16 dollars range down to the 14 dollars range uh, put me about 10 percent down on my position i thought you know what this is a great opportunity just to buy some i look at the company now and i think you know this company has basically stayed at the same share price since it ipo'd uh, about a year coming up to about a year and a half ago i'd say so because the share price has basically stayed, stayed roughly the same as when it came onto the stock market a year and a half ago i look at what the company's done uh, we talk about this company here is probably going to grow uh, revenue at 130 percent this year there's a chance we're going to start getting back to profitability because they put a lot of money into the uh, expanding it to handle that 130 percent revenue growth and uh, as well as that we're just going into the the peak period for gang because uh, Q3, uh, Q4, Q1, we start getting the NFL season in it, which is where it will really benefit from. So we are starting to enter gang's peak time as well right now. And um, yeah, the financials are putting already and say that this is has an amazing balance sheet, massive growth sector. Um, for me to trade at these sort of valuations is just absolutely insane. Uh, for me, you know, this on this list right now, this is the one that you, you know, you asked me, which is the, you know, the most likely 10 bagger in the next few years. It's this one. I, I at least think that in the next five years, there's a really strong chance that I get a 5x return on it. I don't like to say them sort of things because I feel like I'm kind of hyping the stock and putting pressure on it and making it sound like, oh, it's a must invest opportunity. But generally when I, I do work out where I see this company going in the next five years and the valuation it's at, I generally do see this being a potential 5x uh, stock in here. And uh, it's one that I would love to kind of make my biggest position in my portfolio. I don't want to just because it is still unprofitable. It is a small cap, but I generally, I'm still shocked to see this one at these sort of prices. Uh, and yeah, it's the one that I am, like I said, it's one, probably on this list, it's one that I'm very, very confident on. And number six is my newest stock on this list for the US side of it, which is Hims. Uh, when I first started buying this stock, my idea was to kind of get that into the $8 range. I thought that was a pretty good valuation. Uh, but I, what is done amazing is it has started to dip into that $7 range. I always thought if I could get this to a $7 range, it would be absolutely amazing. So we've been low $7. I've been buying into this one. Seems to be, I am kind of rushing into this quite a bit, uh, which is the only little thing that I'm being very careful of is that I am buying quite heavy. But like I said, I always thought if I can get hymns in the $7 range, uh, I'll be very happy. And with hymns, it was doing that this week. Also, a little correction, I just realized that I put this stock on this list twice. So he is at number 10. I've just took it off the list. But number six was hymns. Number seven was Beyond Meat. So I bought some more Beyond Meat. It has been a rough kind of couple of months for Beyond Meat recently. Not 100% sure why, because going into their recent financials, their recent financials showed the recovery starting to happen with the company. You know, this company has been, it is one of the, on this list, it's definitely one that has a lot more short sellers attacking it all the time. Uh, with the stock, you know, a lot of people saying, oh, it's, you know, finally come to the end. But when you look at it, it's lost half its company. It, it lost the food service. 
uh, and now that restaurants are opening back up again, everyone's going out a lot more, it's getting a bit busier. What was evidence in the uh, Q2 is that the retail was strong, but the food service was reco recovering. We were starting to see it in the financials and people still denying that, even though it, it, the, the numbers there don't lie. So for me, um, while people are still kind of still in denial that this is starting to recover, and hopefully once again we see uh, Q3 be very strong for it, um, then I will just keep buying this one. Uh, probably at the point now where I built my position up that um, I feel like at some point this will pop as it sometimes does do and when that happens it's probably one of those stocks I do take a little bit of profit off you know like a, 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 if it's at 30-40% gain I probably will just trim this position slightly uh, but I think that the drop in this one is massively overdone so uh, yeah I did uh, buy a little bit more beyond me and number eight probably the one that I would say is the more easy money on this stock that I can't believe it's at these valuations is Corsair but I bought some more Corsair uh, just because I look at the, the valuation it's at growing at 25% revenue rate. The TAM that it's in, you know, streaming, gaming, that's only going to grow over the next few years. And uh, yeah, I, I could make, um, this This for me is whatever your, whatever sort of investor you are, you must be able to see that Corsair is massively undervalued here. People think this is only a, you know, a CV stock that's benefited, but they're still putting in massive around, amounts of growth. And let's not forget it's a 16p ratio, you know, that, that's the bonkers thing. You know, a company that like this should be trading at like a 30p ratio uh, and it's got, you know, it's doing amazing. So uh, number eight was Corsair. And number nine uh, was skills. So I did buy some more skills this week, only tr adding in a little bit because I am kind of fully built on this position now and I don't want to commit too much more money to it. But when you ask tank to say this has dropped into the $8 range, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to just buy a little bit more here. So I did do that. A lot of you guys have been asking for a full video on this one in particular. If there isn't anything that pops up and kind of goes crazy this week, I will see if I can probably make a skills video at some point this week. Um, on my kind of video list to make this week is obviously, this is obviously Monday's video. Uh, I'm probably going to do my US stock market portfolio uh, this week. Uh, I'm probably going to do a video on Facebook at some point this week. Uh, and then depending on what happens on the other two days, um, skills could be on that list for, for a video if uh, nothing crazy happens in the stock market, but you never know. Um, so yeah, skills was number nine. I did buy a bit more on this one. Um, just adding in a little bit. I can't believe it's down in the $8 range, but hey, you know, um, I'll just buy a little bit here and uh, see where it goes. It is crazy to think this was at one time, like a, was it like a $30, $40 stock and now it's $8. Uh, it's absolutely bonkers. Uh, so yeah, I did buy a little bit more uh, in skills anyway. So yeah, I hope the video was useful anyway. If it was, hit like, but if you do, subscribe. And I'll see you on tomorrow's video.